Yo, 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 yo. What's up, everybody? Uh, we got something special for you this week. Trash all that. Rowdy in the pit. Of the pit. Nobody knows what the fuck is going on. Developing some type of weather weapon. weather weapon. You're almost like sexual asphyxia, like yo yo. Rowdy in the pit. Yo yo. Actually, wait. Let me try that again. Yo yo. All right, that's way better. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome to Rowdy in the Piff. This is episode number Who Gives a Shit? Oh, dropping bars on them quick. Damn. Quick and fast today. Whoa. Dropping bars. Actually, no, this is uh, episode number six. So thanks for joining us. Welcome. My name is Rowdy, also known as The Goose. With me today, again, as always, of course, The Goat, also known as The Piff. Yo, what's up? What's up? Well, don't fucking ask me questions, Oh, dude. Bro. You know you don't ask don't questions. Don't you sidetrack me. Don't you sidetrack me, God damn it. <laughs> questions. What's so, with the questions? How are you doing? What is your name? Yeah, fu- nobody cares about any of that shit. What is this? What is this? What is this? What is this? Roll call? Second grade roll call? Mm, nobody cares how you honor are. Roll. I was on the merit roll because I was dumb, even in middle school. But, uh, yeah, so... The Notorious. We've gone. We've we've gone six episodes, and I'm already trying to talk about Conor McGregor. Yeah, again. you are. Because yeah, some new shit came came up into the into the the, the atmosphere, and apparently they're already making a movie, uh-huh. a real movie, about coming to cinemas cinemas near you about the Notorious Conor McGregor. They make movies about people who lose fights now. Wow, crazy. Yeah, apparently. And they make p- movies about people too soon. Who knows what will happen later on in his career. I mean, they should have made the movie later. That's obvious. But here's the thing. This is my take on it. Uh, if I was somebody who didn't know anything about the UFC and I didn't know anything about Conor McGregor, and I saw that pop up, saw that, that trailer pop up, I'd look at it and be like, wow, it's actually pretty dope. Probably be a pretty good movie just as it is. But if you know anything, it's like, okay, he's been, like, on the scene for literally four years. We should probably let a little bit more happen before, you know, his quote-unquote legacy is, you know, uh, immortalized in the feature films. Yeah. No, I checked out the trailer yesterday, and it was dope. It was dope. I liked it. It looked like a good movie. You know, I like movies like that, though. I don't know how big his, you know, market's going to be for a movie like that. You know, sometimes movies like that do good. Sometimes they don't. Uh, so we'll have to see. But the trailer did look cool. And the fact that it started off by saying it was, you know, Universal Productions, you know, that adds something to it. It means he's got like a, it's not one of those low budget type of deals. It seems like it's going to be a bigger film. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a real film. And man, it, there's no way it's going to do bad. It just really can't. Because it doesn't matter if you like, like Conor McGregor or not. His He has so many... His fan base is absolutely insane. If you can have a thousand Irishmen flying to Vegas just to be there for like your weigh-ins, I mean, you're you're kind of a big deal. I mean, all of Ireland will definitely see it. I'm sure. I and mean, there's a sh- oh, shit yeah. ton of fans. Everybody's a Conor McGregor dick rider. You know that. Oh, I mean, <laughs> I, I I would pay anything to to have him knock me out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, dude, shit, I'd, I'd have him knock me out if I got paid. I'd go in there, the octagon with Conor McGregor today for literally 100 Gs. Easy. Oh, yeah. I'd probably do it for like 25. Yeah, 25K. You knock know. me out, son. Knock me out in 13 seconds, please. That'll be the quickest money I've ever made. Kick me in the fucking balls and punch me in the throat. <laughs> okay, Damn. how about neither of those things? <laughs> I want it to be easy. I want it to be easy money. I want to go in there and get clipped right on the chin, broop, so I'm out and I don't remember anything. You want to get literally like punched in the throat to where you're choking on air and then kicked in the nuts, which is the worst pain you can face. I want it to be viral, so I'm going to start the fight by running full speed screaming <laughs> at him. And, t- and then when I go for the takedown, he's going to knee me right in the forehead. My brain's going to go through the back of my head. <laughs> And it's fucking, that's going to be, it's going to be viral. Well, so make I'll make sure, money off yeah, the fight ma- and then the viral shit. If your brain came through your head, you're not, ma- I mean, you're not making shit. So make sure you put in your will that you're giving all the proceeds for the fight to me because you're dead if that happens to you. But that's why I'd need at least 100K because um, then I don't, 25K just isn't enough to get your brain knocked through your skull. The medical bills alone, the medical bills alone. Yeah, in all actuality, I guess the best situation is for you to go in there and pretend you're fighting and then hopefully... If he's feeling nice that day, if he's feeling, then he'll just choke you out, 
and then you can just go to sleep. <laughs> Wake up rich. Yeah. Actually, you know what? Fuck all that. I'd rather go... I'd rather fight Floyd Mayweather for just a mil. Because that's nothing in that fight. Except for I'm not a draw, I guess. But think about this, though. If you have... It doesn't matter. Floyd Mayweather against a nobody, a schmuck, against a schmuck like me, who, who's just some, some nobody... I think people would want to see that. Be like, dude, this dude is going to go in there and box him. That's fucking nuts. Yeah. I'll pay a mil yeah, for that. But the that. thing about that is is they got pads on. Like the, the, the gloves are bigger, so you know you're going to take a few more. It's bare knuckle. Oh. We're doing bare knuckle, of okay, course. Well, in that case, you're going to get cut the fuck up. In that case, I'm fucking him up. In that case, I'm fucking Holy him shit, up, okay? Dude, uppercuts? Yeah, but I'll land an uppercut on him. Nah, I'm just kidding. I'll get fucking... Destroyed. Uh, I'll fight anybody for a meal. Uh, but I do outweigh him by like 8,000 pounds, so. Yeah, well, and all he does is eat McDonald's, and then he still goes in there and he just fucks everyone up, so. We saw that. But yeah, the, the McGregor movie looks pretty dope. I mean, I'm definitely going to watch it after the fact, you know. I'm not a, I don't go to the movie theater that much anymore. I'm not trying to pay $50 dollars for a bag of popcorn i don't want to pay 15 dollars for a small soda and i also don't like going to movies where i hear everybody fucking talk during the movie fucking laugh at parts that aren't funny fucking smells like smells gross in there smells like a fair no you know there's gonna be irishmen in there probably too just like doing whatever they're they're singing and shit (laughs) You know, I guarantee yeah. you, every single theater you go into, not, there's not going to be crying babies. There's going to be singing Irishmen everywhere, which is fine. But I would rather watch it from the the comfort of my own home with cheap popcorn. Yeah. But you know, I, I'll I'll see the movie. It looks like a good movie. But all I'm saying is, man, should have waited. Like he's been on the scene for literally four years. Four years ago, he was actually a nobody, and now you know he's worth I don't know a hundred million dollars. Which is pretty Yeah, cool. he's getting that bread. He just wants to get that bread. So, well, he's not fighting. He's doing movies. And then he gets after the, after the movie, he gets into a fight. And he's just getting the money for his kid. And, you know, got to respect that. I, I'm, not a, I'm not a Conor McGregor hater. I like to joke. But, you know, yeah, the, the, story is, the story is really interesting. It's motivational. He willed himself to the position he's at. And it's, yeah, it's a good story for, I mean, it's, it's a good story for kids to watch and see that anything is possible and you can accomplish anything if you have the right attitude. So No, so yeah, that's true, that's true. And I'm not a Conor McGregor hater either. If anyone knows me, they probably think that that's not true. But if you've ever listened to anything I said, what do I actually hate? Do you know? You hate his fans. You hate the dick riders. I hate his fans. They're re- Yeah, the, the Conor McGregor dick riders doesn't really have anything to do with him. It's just the fact that they're so stupid and delusional most of the time that it's just uh, it's 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 cringeworthy to listen to anything that they have to say and they they're just annoying as shit they're the worst they're the worst fan base ever um huge fan base great and supportive but they're just can you not be is it not allowable to be supportive and also have a brain and use logic i don't get that cuz that's where i am like i'll i'll have all the fan I'll, i mean i'll have all the favorite fighters in the world but i'll always be realistic about them and not just be a complete idiot. But I think it has to do with the fact that a lot of the people that came in, he brought a lot of new eyes to the UFC. So they, they come in not really knowing shit about anything. And all they know is McGregor and the fact that he fucks everybody up, which is true. But Yeah, I know. think people are excited to see yeah. him get back into the cage, though, because that's where he really does work. And uh, everybody wants to see that third fight with Nate Diaz and also uh, that Russian kid, Khabib. Yeah. Khabib. Yeah, who knows if that'll ever happen. That kid can't make weight. But, um, yeah, that'll be good. Um, the thing is, is... What's the thing? What was I going to say? What the hell was I talking about? What were we even talking about? Fans and stuff. Yeah, you uh, were talking about the dick riders. Yeah, no, this is what I was going to say. Uh, <laughs> I had a brain fart. But, yeah, so, I mean, he needs to get back in there for the sake of the UFC. Because li- cause literally there's, what is it, two title fights today? Or... At least one. I don't know. There's there's a big card today, and um, nobody really cares. Nobody really cares. Nobody really cares about seeing Demetrius, you know, break the record for title defenses because most of the time it's not that entertaining of a fight. You know, we need some entertainers in there, um, and uh, he's he's the one. He's he's the one. Yeah, a lot of people. A lot of people get mad at. You. They get upset when you talk about how boring a fucking flyweight fight is, but nobody's getting knocked out. It's not happening most of the time. 
and it just goes on and on and on. And they're really fast, mm-hmm. but their punches are like fucking. There's like so many punches, and it doesn't seem like it does anything. Yeah. So uh, it's not entertaining. I like the heavyweights, and uh, no, I'm not gonna watch the card tonight, mainly because I'm not interested in any of the people fighting, and I I can't fucking stand Tony Ferguson. I, I'm he's a good fighter, but I just want to. I want to see a highlight afterwards of him getting knocked the fuck out because he's annoying to me. Yeah. Yeah, that fight in itself is both those guys are, are trying to be the next Conor McGregor and trying to, you know, talk all this shit, but they're just they're just kind of annoying in that way. But here's he the thing. He just seems like a fucking nerd. I don't, I just yeah. I don't like him. Yeah, but he, here's the thing about, about these fighters, especially these really lightweight fighters. I can appreciate. I can appreciate their speed and how good they are. Same way I can appreciate somebody who's really good at jiu-jitsu and you know their ground game is 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 phenomenal and they you know they they can wrap you up and they can wrestle you and all that stuff i can appreciate all those things and i have been appreciating all those things for like 15 years that i've been watching mma but it gets to a point where you know you can only appreciate shit so much i want to see some people get knocked the fuck out with a a spinning heel hook you know i want to see somebody get rocked with a combo and just like get knocked dead you know not really oh, dead, yeah. but, you know, there's only so much... I, you can appreciate the art. It's kind of like boxing. I can appreciate what Floyd Mayweather does. He's he's ridiculous in there. He's like a magician. But at the same time, it's not really that entertaining. It was entertaining to see him finish Conor McGregor, but that's not typical of what he does, at least in the, the recent years. So you can appreciate something, but also want something else. It's just not a draw to watch people be way too good. I want to see a. I want to see them go in there and bang. Everybody's thirsty for a knockout. That's what everybody really wants to see. Just like when they watch NFL, they're really thirsty for heavy hits and touchdowns. They don't care so much for the, you know, run game and the boringness of it. And yeah, that's just the way entertainment is. All right, enough of Conor McGregor. Enough of the Conor McGregor. I want to get into something strange. Do you like strange things? Don't answer that. I'm not drunk, I'm a time traveler, said a guy that got arrested in Wyoming for public intoxication. And he claims he was in the year 2048, and he was just dropped off by aliens full of alcohol, and he's trying to warn us that they're coming next year. Wow. You know what? Here's the deal. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me explain something to you, okay? Okay, Linda, listen, 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 honey, listen, Linda, if you were an alien species if you were an intelligent alien civilization and you were constantly picking up people and probing them and doing your experiments on them and stuff like that and you know they're going to go back and talk but you've learned over time that nobody believes a drunk asshole who's just drunk and like i got abducted by goose so they're like hmm we'll give you some booze send you back down there nobody will believe you and now we can keep abducting you guys willy-nilly and making sure you're all strung out on drugs and and liquored up before we send you back because guess what nobody's gonna take you seriously okay it's probably some alien booze it's probably top shelf stuff but i don't understand if they're gonna fill them up with alcohol i mean i'm sure they're more technologically advanced that so they could just like erase his memory and drop him off and then he they'd be like what are you doing out here naked and he, he'd be like i i don't know <laughs> i don't know and then they would just think right. he's fucking crazy either way so, uh, well, hey, but I have the answer for that though. They don't have that technology. Oh, you have the answer. Simple oh, you that. spent time with him. Well, well, think about it. It's like everything that we perceive of aliens or th- things that we've designed in our brains, just because we think that you know the men in black can erase your memory with that little light thing of a jigger, doesn't mean that that technology actually exists. So maybe they can't wipe your memory. Maybe they have to. Use a little bit more slimy tactics like we would do. And they just slime you up with some slime, liquor you up with some booze, yeah. slip you on down the slide. It's probably not even like a tractor beam. They probably have a giant ass slide. They slime you up, they liquor you up, and they rub you down, and then they slide you down the slide. And it's like one of those slides of the fair that are kind of like wavy. Woo-doosh, 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 woo-doosh. And then you, by the time you get to the bottom, you're like flying in the air. Dude, that way when you hit the bottom, you're also disoriented and drunk and dirty because you hit the ground hard. And then there you are. They just think you're some homeless drunk, <laughs> and they're not going to pay attention to you. And it's a smart, smart tactic on their part. That's the real intelligence. Oh, Ronald, yeah, he's just drunk. Don't mind him. What if what if they're not? <laughs> of course, his name's yeah, Ronald. What if they're not? 
probing? What if they're not, you know, being all weird and experimental? What if they're just partying? What if you guys, what if they're taking people and they're like, hey, come party with us? And they're actually having a fucking grand old time. It's actually really lit up there. All sorts of waves. And then they throw you down the slide and you're upset because, you know, you had to leave the party. But then you're like, oh, wait a minute. Hey, wait a minute. Now that I'm sober, uh, they were saying some shit about folding time and fucking that they're coming to get us. Oh, shit. You know, then it's, you know. Yeah, maybe, maybe he was up there partying and then like he overheard some shit he wasn't supposed to hear. So they thought, ah, did he hear that? I don't know. We don't want to have to vaporize them with our phaser guns because we're from the future. Um, But so we'll just give him some liquor. He'll probably forget. He'll black out like he always does. You know, Ronald, you know how Ronald is. Typical, typical classic Ronald. So, but they, they, they didn't calculate it correctly because guess what? He's coming down and trying to drop some knowledge. So if a dude came up to you and was like, Oh, yeah, and he told you about his experience with aliens, or are you going to believe him? Probably not. I wouldn't. I wouldn't believe him. I don't talk to bums, no. okay? Especially when they smell like booze. <laughs> Stay away from me. Uh. <laughs> Just kidding. Guys, I love bums. <laughs> but, okay, here, here's the deal. That, that may be a non-creditable source, because he was drunk, or maybe the aliens gave him liquor. Who really knows? But there have been some abductions in the past that are a little bit more creditable. There is a story. There is a story. That happened September 19th, 1961. This woman claims to have been abducted by aliens. And it's like, okay, that shit's been going on for a long time. People are like, oh, I was abducted by dude. Abducted by abducted by dude. The the aliens got me. And then what she did, though, this is the thing. She was like, here, this is where I was. You know, we were on a spaceship, and I could see see the constellations that were in the sky. They weren't our constellations. She drew them. And, you know, the the scientists and the specialists were like, yeah, this isn't a real fucking constellation. So, screw you, lady. Years later, years later, they discover Zeta Reticuli, which is the star system that has supposedly where the greys come from. The greys. And guess what? It's the exact shit that she drew years before it was even discovered. She drew Zeta Reticuli, the star system. What? Hmm. Hmm. Maybe that makes you think a little bit about what's really going on out there, people. Open your eyes. It's all around you. They're gonna put something in your hole in your hole next, dude, for talking like that. <laughs> You're gonna get it. No, 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 no. You wanna know why? Because because I'm I'm too woke for that. Dude, they're gonna I really know probe this shit out of you. <laughs> Cattle prod Not in the ass. That. They're not going to probe people who are onto them, you know. It's always the unsuspecting farmer, you know. The unsuspecting farmer who's out there just, well, I got you know, I got my crops to deal with today. I got the corn. Hey, hey, Sally, get, make, make sure you make me some sweet tea. Ew. I don't watch TV. I just read the news. And, you know, they don't talk about that stuff in the news very often. So the aliens are like, oh, this guy doesn't know what the hell's going on. So tractor beam or just a probably like a, a rope or something they throw down because fuck tractor beams. You know, that's probably not a real technology. And then they send them down on the slide. This after getting hammered. The wavy slide. Yeah, so you never really know. I mean, some of these some of these alien occurrences seem like they have some 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 validity to them. You never really know. You know, you never know what the aliens are doing to you out there. But all right, we've talked about some things today, Con McGregor. We've talked about some aliens, some interesting topics, but um we have somebody on the show that you have heard before. It's time for the Chronicles of Gunt. What's up, folks? We got the Chronicles for you, and the Chronicles are all about the mysterious, the unknown. You know, things that make you go, huh, what the fuck? And this time we're talking about skiers. And this is the 1950s. We're going to go back to the 1950s. We're going to go over to Russia. A group of skiers in Russia go on a ski trip. They disappear. When authorities investigate, what they find is strange. And so we got our guy on it to give us the inside scoop. So what are we dealing with? The Antlov Pass, uh, 1959, Ural Mountains in Russia. Uh, nine skiers went there, and they found the bodies afterwards. But what happened in between is kind of pretty mysterious with some quirks to the end. And what happened was they were supposed to send off a, a telegraph to a person that became ill that left. So Dyatlov told him, all right, uh, that I will go ahead and send you a telegraph around the 12th of February. Well, the 16th, no telegraph came through. You're talking minus 21, winter time, degrees, winter wind chill, mm. snow, snowstorm. 
Now we, uh, so when the telegraph didn't come, the parents of the skiers went to government and said, hey, so what's going on? Oh, they went to the government. So they sent out, yeah, so they sent out a search party, and the search party got there probably around, uh, I don't know, maybe the 23rd, 16th of the 23rd of February. Found two bodies, a tent ripped open, first of all, from the inside out, which I'll later discuss briefly. They tracked, they were novice, 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 Nostradamus, people right. that scoured the whole area. And obviously, there was no crime scene set up. So, so anyway, fast forward. A springtime comes along. When the searchers went there, they were expecting to find the people alive. Well, obviously, they didn't. They tracked all over the place. And footprints, obviously, were, because of their footprints, covered up anything possible of any footprints outside the tent. Or around the tent area. So then they went back down by the ravine, down by the water, and the water was running through their clothes and their body. And they had found beta, uh, a small amount of beta, gamma, or beta (laughs) radiation, not gamma. Beta radiation. So small radiation. Small traces. Yeah. Okay. And so what they speculated, though, was what the theorists, have speculated is that those bodies were in the water for a while and that washes stuff up, washes it, washes the radiation off your skin and your clothing. So they, they can't really determine how much radiation these four people experienced that were down by the water. But those are the only four that they found with any radiation on them. So why did they, how did they know they were affected by radiation? They go and they find these bodies. They say, oh, these guys must have froze to death and all these other three are lined up. What, what made them find out? How did they find out they were f- affected by radiation? Well, after they brought all the bodies back, and even before that, uh, and the tent, for further research, they mm-hmm. found the tent's was slashed from the beginning uh, more than one time from the inside out. <clears throat> so they wanted to get out, out of there in a hell of a hurry for some reason. Uh, so they gave the inspector of the Russian government, mm-hmm. inspector, cop, so to speak, the government ordered it, take a Geiger counter up there with you. Well, why in the hell would you do that? I mean... If you go to a crime scene as an investigator, as a regular cop, are you going to be ordered by your lieutenant or sergeant or somebody else in, in modern day to take a Geiger counter up to the crime scene? No, that's not uh, that's not typical, I would say. I would say it's not in right. the average so, uh, tool bag. Right. So why is that ordered? Anyway, they hmm. did, and that's how they found that. And then when they got the bodies back and started thawing them, and they found more radiation. Oh, they got your counter. okay. So that's strange. Oh. That's not normal for, you know, when you go and find somebody and uh, they have traces of radiation on them and they're out in the middle of nowhere. There was there, right. there was no equipment, was there any equipment that they were using that had, that would have radiation in it or something? None at all. Oh, okay. no. The only thing near was, was mining. Oh. They did some mining up there. But the but government it, knew something because they said, hey, go bring a Geiger counter. I want to see something. And that's, that yeah, tells me they knew. Figured, right? Yeah, Why are we going to Geiger counter these, these people with clothes and the area? They knew something. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, they knew. And they found residual spots of beta in the area, but more on the, more on the last four victims that were found, found down by the, uh, in the water. Down by the, half of them were in. Half of their bodies were in the water, the other half were out. <laughs> so they were they, they <laughs> ran out the they ran out of the tent together. Scott separated. Some of them tried to come back. In the end, they were all found spread out and some of them were together, but there was traces of radiation. The tent was cut open. Uh, what what other signs what other signs do we have going on? What other things did they find at the scene? Photography that was taken. They have a, they took a lot of photographs, the uh, skiers did. Um, during the trip. Okay. 
during a snowstorm, prior to them setting up the camp, or while setting up the camp, in the background of one of the photos is something that you can see that is pinpointed creeping behind a tree. Now, in a diary of one of the women, what? That was, they, were all, they all kept the diaries. Uh, in the diary that they found was, she had stated, and this is all she stated, now we know that snowmen really exist. What? Now, was we, she, re, the films were developed, so who the hell knows? Was she referring to them seeing a the Yeti, or was she referring to them being in a snowstorm? A Yeti? Is that like a, a Yeti with fucking... Ye- Yeti. Yeah, Yeti. Star Wars? Jedi. Yeti. So, Yeti. damn, that's weird. So they did find diaries and photographs when they went to the scene along yeah, with the there's an bodies. Actual, there's an actual photograph, just one that I know of, that you can uh, find online where it shows this... I don't know what it is, because it's hard to make out. Just the head and upper body kind of peeking behind a tree with black eyes. You'll have to shoot that to me in the text. Knows. You'll have to shoot that to me. Right. So that's strange. Uh, right. that, that they, so if the you, listeners you know. want to Google that and look at the photos, the images on the DA Love, they can actually see that one photo. Okay. So that's strange. They have right. photographs, so, diaries, fucking radiation so far. All right, yeah, everything sounds normal there. What else do we have? The fuck you? <laughs> so here's the theories behind everything after okay. all said and done. One of the theories was there were people outside the tent, or three individuals outside the tent, from from the skiing party, that all of a sudden something happened, and they told the rest of the people inside the tent to get the hell out quick, for right. whatever reason. Yeah. <clears throat> One of the other speculations is that it possibly was a yeti, yeti, yeti attack. Multiple Yeti, uh, maybe. Obviously, the footprints were all discarded because they had covered them all up during the investigation, so you couldn't tell what was what. And the other, the two other theories are it was an accident from the military. Hmm. Okay. Or it was something to do with aliens. Oh. And I'll tell you why, real quick, on the alien subject theory, is that a minor... Not far away from there, uh, maybe, I don't know, 25, 50 to 100 miles. I'll get my facts straight right now because I'm not looking at it. But he had seen lights the same night that they had this happen to them based on photography. The skiers took the same night with orbs, bright orbs in the sky. In the sky. Huh. In the sky. And you also have the fact that there's radiation found on their bodies. Okay, I'm looking at something else here, yeah. though. It's telling me that uh, there were eyeballs missing and tongues missing from some of the people that they found. What the fuck? This is correct. The last four they found had injuries that can only be explained as a crash, car crash injury. Nothing external, everything internal. Wow. Chests were caved in on two of the victims. Jesus. Four of the vic- two of the victims were missing both their eyeballs, and one of the women was missing her tongue. Wow. It was not ripped out, as far as the coroner goes, and it was not cut out. What? Which means somehow it was... It, somehow it was... Precisely surgically removed. That woman was very outspoken in the group. Would tell you off, would say, hey, this, that, I don't like you. <laughs> like, she had a mouth on her, okay? She had a mouth on her. Gee. So, so cut out her tongue. Man. That's a little weird. That's a little weird, too, that out of all the people, she, she was the only one with her tongue, tongue missing. Like, huh. somebody already knew. Everything, you know, that she, she was basically an asshole to you if she didn't like you. Jeez. And would, would tell you. Imagine being the investigator that shows up to that scene. You got fucking bodies all over the place, 
The government's telling you to bring a ra uh, Geiger counter. There's people saying there's orbs in the sky, tongues, eyeballs missing, f uh, flesh stripped out on a, onto a tree, and you got to try to solve it. And so, and so it's never, and it's never, from what I'm seeing here, it's never been solved. And they just cl closed the case. How the, what did they determine was the cause of death? They just said, ah, fuck it, we don't know. Well, the first, the first five were hypothermia. The last four were, there was also skull injuries to two of the males. One was a major skull injury. The other one was a, a little more minor. But the last four victims that they found on the stream, like I had said before, and I'll reiterate, the internal wounds were as of they were in a car crash with no seatbelt. Mm -hmm. And the woman that the woman that had her tongue removed, and I'll say removed because it wasn't cut out or ripped out, was surgically from the root, we're talking about, from the root, found blood in her stomach, which meant that when the tongue was removed, the blood went from that ton into her stomach. Ugh. That's disgusting. So, she, which means she was alive when it happened. Oh. That's, there's so many things that there, I don't know how you track that down. I'm inclined to think that it's something to do with the government because they knew ahead of time to bring a fucking Geiger counter. Maybe they had known... Oh, and maybe these skiers uh, came across something they weren't supposed to come across that they were hiding out in a place that was remote because it was remote and the government had it out there and they ran into it and they should. Maybe it was a, sounds like some kind of weird thing was out there and they ran across it and they, and the government was like, yo, we're going to close this shit down. We can't have this happening. <laughs> well, here's the funny thing about that. Every theory, every theory that you may have does not explain the body conditions. None of them. If it was Yeti, he would have ripped them apart. Or whatever he would have done. Mm -hmm. Okay? If it was aliens, what'd you fit in? Uh, with radiation and stuff. Then why was, why were their noses smashed in? What? And their skulls fractured and tongues missing and eyeballs on four of the victims on the night. Okay? But that kind of doesn't make any sense. You could just complain with just it. take them all away. Yeah. And as far as a military experiment that's gone awry, like they fired a rocket at land there and freaking blew them up, well, don't you think that the body parts are all over the freaking place? <laughs> yeah. I mean, nothing makes... You can't point the one theory and say, okay, this makes sense. Because it doesn't explain the next question you have. Uh, it's, it's possible multiple things. Maybe the aliens showed up at the same time as Yeti, the same time the government was there trying to capture one of them, and then they had a fucking triple threat match uh, with all these people in the middle, and that's why <laughs> there's so many different things going on. That's, the, that's some crazy shit. I've never heard of that before until now. Uh, I'm looking into it, and yeah, there's some pictures. Yeah, oh, man, there's a lot of weird shit. That's a lot of weird shit to be happening at once, and then I'm seeing that they closed the pass, and, they, and nobody's allowed over there no more, and this is over in Russia. Well, they they did close the pass shortly after that. Uh, nobody was allowed up there. They have reopened it since. Uh, they actually, it's been reopened since the uh, relatives and parents of the victims uh, finally, in, I think the late 19, or the early 1960s, finally were allowed to go up there and lay some recent memorial in the area that they were found. Well, that's uh, good. It's, <laughs> you have to have a good reason, uh, a very good reason to go up there, like logging, timber, mining, something like that, because they won't allow you up there in that area anymore. The Russians won't. Yeah, well, they they don't want to have to explain all anything that happens, I guess. Wow, crazy. So uh, spell that out for us again, and uh, that way the listeners can Google it up and see all the shit for themselves and make determinations, and we'd love to hear We'd love to hear from, you know, from the listeners what they think and what they're, maybe they have more information that we 
that we haven't you know touched on that they want to talk about. So what do we spell it out for us and give it give us the uh, the name of it on and what you can type in on YouTube and shit. I at love pass. Okay, good. Okay, so what? So yeah, jeez. Yeah, people can look that up and and speculate and draw their own conclusions and theories. There's like I said, every theory has an obstacle in front of it because all those theories don't make sense for pointing at one one specific thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other thing I really want to mention quick is the Mansi are a tribe in that area. And at first, and they've been there forever, and at first, and they call it Dead Mountain, mm-hmm. or Mountain of the Dead. And that, that wasn't based on Dyatlov, just to give you a little history. Oh. It was based on nothing grows there. There's nothing to eat. There's no, and these these Mansi are pretty much elk, elk herders, oh, and yeah. they've been there forever. Jeez. Uh, they speculated at first that the Mansi went there because they had violated Mansi ground, but the Mansi actually uh, helped with the invest- investigation. So mm. Mansi are another theory, but. Huh. That's pretty much so they were so there were natives in the area, huh? In the search and the help, uh, they you know they really you can count, you can count them out. So we got to pay attention a going long forward. Time ago, <laughs> a long time ago, if you look in that area, a long time ago, don't know when, but a long time ago, the Mansi had actually tribes people that were. In that area that disappeared also, and were never found. Hmm. You can look that up and Google it. All right, well, there you have it. Those are the Chronicles. So if you're interested in that story, it, drop some comment. We'll put some links up on the videos and YouTube. Uh, we'll put some links up for you, you know. And we'll also maybe try to, you know, throw some pictures up there. But if you guys like this kind of stuff, let us know. We'll uh, keep doing it, you know. And let us know, you know. All right. And I'm out. That's that's uh, the Chronicles. Well, it's about that time that we shut it down. Episode 6, we talked about Conor McGregor and his movie. We talked about aliens. We talked about people who get drunk. Maybe, maybe even with the aliens. And we're on YouTube. Rowdy and the Piff. Like it. Subscribe to it. Comment. We're on Apple, on the podcast app. Uh, you can listen to it there. But I swear to God, if you don't review it, I fucking, I swear to God. That's all I'm going to say. And then also we're on Twitter, at Rowdy Piff Pod. And it's easy to follow us and, you know, at us about anything you want. So, you know, but it's about that time. Gotta, gotta fucking go. So thanks for listening. Till next time. Yo, 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 yo. What's up, everybody? Uh, we got something special for you this week. Trash all that. <laughs> Rowdy in the pit. Nobody knows what the fuck is going on. Developing some type of... Weather, 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 weather. You're weather, almost weather. like sexual asphyxia, like, like yo, 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 yo,